Hi guys, welcome to part two of how to build a Serastus Knight from Forge World. Those of you that saw the first part will know that um, I'm just doing a series of videos on how I build a Serastus Knight. Um, so this is video number two. You'll notice that the board is now empty. Um, I've spent about two hours, I think, um, clipping and filing and cleaning and inspecting. So two hours. Um, that's not too bad, to be fair. Um, that that's quite a quite an enjoyable little um, little time. Like I said in the previous vid, it's a it's a modeler's model, and um, I really do enjoy looking at the components, looking at all the detail, um, you know, and, and deciding you know what's going to happen with this model. Anyway, so in the previous vid, um, um, I didn't really show you what how what I use. So I mean, I, I I've got a basic GW knife. Um, these aren't GW blades though. Um, they they you know are similar I suppose, but uh, um, they they're just from a hobby shop. But they fit the the handle. I quite like the handle, sort of rubberized handle. Quite like that. Um, pair of clippers. Um, I've recently replaced. I was using GW clippers, um, and I had the same pair or set for years and years and years, and was wondering why it wasn't clipping properly. Um, obviously, they go blunt over time. So I bought these new set of clippers. Really nice. This is just from a local modeling hobby shop really nice really sharp although i suppose any sharp pair of clippers is going to be better than um you know any blunt pair <laughs> and then a whole host of files basically um this is from a pack i can't remember where i had them from but all different shapes and sizes flat edge ones some round ones some triangular ones uh, what we got like one with a curved edge on one side um what else there's a, another round oh, and there's a square one as well just to get just it's useful to have different files so you can um, um, get into all the little nooks and crannies when you are when you're getting rid of all the flash so and this is the result basically in the tub so we've cleaned everything up all looks really nice now to be fair so all nice and done uh, so basically uh, I'm gonna put a load of washing up liquid in there and I'm going to put warm water in that, give it a swish about and let it soak basically, let it let it soak. Um, then I've got my, my old toothbrush that I mentioned to you before. Um, so it's my resin cleaning toothbrush, which will go in there. And then we're just going to, we're just going to basically, again, probably spend about another hour, hour and a half maybe, um, scrubbing all the pieces, making sure the release agent's off. And then giving it a good rinse back in just warm water or, you know, it doesn't have to be warm, to be fair. Um, just, just lukewarm or warm water. And remember, don't have it boiling hot because boiling hot water warps resin. Um, I've been through all the parts. Actually, it's looking pretty good. The um, um, There is a bit in there of the, of the lance that might need a bit of de-warping. But everything else is looking pretty nice. And generally you won't know if it unless it's obvious you won't know if it needs de-warping until you come to the dry fit which will be another part of this video so that's going to go in the that's all going to go for a soak in a second um not too much wasted actually either this is my bin of waste um, as i've been clipping so yeah that's all the bits that were left over so not too bad to be fair not bad at all right what next um I oh, posing of this model, posing of this model. Um, okay, so the instructions show you, show you the parts, show you the build. So start with the torso, and then start building the legs. So you've got foot sections. You've got four toes per foot. You've got a lower leg and an upper leg, um, and pistons. So basically, you need to decide straight away basically what pose you want this model in um we'll go over to the cabinet a minute I think. oops i'm inadvertently zooming you okay um previous models here's the reaver in, ex in, a, in an extremely static pose um knees bent slightly but it was such an expensive model and my second foray into large ford world kits and i didn't want to mess it up so i went for a static pose looks pretty good he's freestanding he'll stand on any flat surface he's not secured to this board it's just a 
just a bit of um, scenery um, that, I, that I made. So there's that. The other chap, on the other hand, the Warhound, um, he is on a scenic base. So his left leg is bent at the knee and bent at the ankle. His toes are curling over this rock and his, and his right foot there, you can see the toes are bent in such a way that it looks like he is walking along. So basically what I'm saying is that you need to decide what kind of base and what position you're going to have these posable models in before you start building it. Because if I, clearly if I built him statically with a straight leg pose, I wouldn't be able to get him to do this across the base. That said, he, he, is, he is stuck on this, but he's not stuck to the base to be fair. He can come off the base. And as long as his foot or his left foot is raised, I don't know, a couple of inches off the ground, he could stand on a different surface, but I'd have to put something under his foot, like a, I don't know, like a bashed up vehicle or something, or maybe a contemptor on its side, something like that, just to balance him. Um, but I mean, generally he, he would stay on this, this um, base. There is a, there is a pin or a pin. There's a, there's a threaded rod coming up through the bottom of this base. And I've drilled a hole into the bottom of his foot that you can see on another video. And basically he's, he's on this base. So he's, he's secure. He's not falling over because he's sort of stepping forward. I didn't want to have a situation again where, um, those of you that have seen a previous vid will know that my, my other, um, Warhound, my Mars pattern fell over because he wasn't secured. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm a bit more mindful about securing my models. So basing for this model, um, it comes with one of these big bases. Um, they're all, I've got three of these and they're all warped. I've got, um, cause I've got two Serastus Knights and one Imperial Knight, uh, yeah, in Knight, Imperial Knight Titan thing. Anyway, um, Anyway, I'm not going to use that base. I'm going to use this base. What I got um, was a, a block, a, a, an oval um, mounting base. It's a little bit bigger than this base. So you can see it's a bit bigger. Um, but that's fine. That's fine for me because I want to pose this Serastus Knight on this base. Let's get rid of that. So I've used some scenery from the battles i think it's the battlescape and it's the craters that you can get from gw and basically just super glued this to the to the base then i've gone in with normal household wall filler it's all coming off um just to kind of blend it in once this is dry i'll go in with pva glue um water down pva it will will make this go solid because you'll find with all these little bits as you as you get it on there, it all chips off because it's um, that's just the nature of wall filler basically. Um, so it'll all chip off. So a good coat of PVA watered down will will solve that, and this won't go anywhere. And then I'm going to put some um, some gravelly bits around the board, so all of this is going to be covered and just build up this base a little bit. So that'll be my base. And then when I start building the Serastus Knight. Um, I can pose him and in the spirit of the warhound I'm going to have him kind of stepping up on here in some way um, so I'll have one foot up here and then one foot back there or one foot up here and one foot back there depending on how I'm going to pose him um, so yeah just just a tip that it's worth thinking about um, well it's not worth thinking about you have to think about how you're going to base the thing before you start building it because you will um, you, you could end up disappointed if you um, end up building it in a static pose. Basically, it's, it's going to stay that way unless you've got some really great techniques that you can um, you can um, make the, the legs working joints, um, you know, but that's that's beyond my skill um, and, and something I'm not I'm not going to do. So he will be again. I will drill up more than likely through the bottom of this base or through this base and have a bit of threaded rod sticking out. And again, when I do it, I'll show you. Um, and then drill a hole in the bottom of the Serastus Knight's foot, just so he's he's secure on this base. And then this base, in fairness, this base could go, you know, if I was ever going to game with the Serastus Knight, this this base is fine. I could I could put this base on a table, no problem. Um, so there, that's um, part two 
of how to build a Serastus Knight. So next, so basically I've got washing to do. Um, we're gonna wash this, um, wash it. Yeah, wash it, scrub it, dry it, and then we're ready to start building. Woohoo! Um, yeah, that was my that was my excitement of the build. Woohoo! Anyway, that's it for me for now, um, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.